the Gupta dynasty from CE 320 to 510. The Guptas became the emperor of northern India in CE 320 and remained in power for 200 years. The stage was set for them by a people called the Kushans. The Kushans were Greek-influenced Asian nomads in Bactria, which is now in northern Afghanistan. They founded the kingdom there in CE 25 and moved north into Turkestan and further south into Afghanistan and India, dominating the area by 100. Their greatest king was Kanishka, from 100 to 130, a Buddhist who was supportive of social tolerance and the arts. Controller in Kushtan gave stability to Asian trade. Around 240, however, Shapur of Persia took much of their land, and they never recovered. The Guptas were minor princes in Magadha. Chandragupta I married a Magadha princess and became king in 320. He started the Gupta tradition of aiding the arts and religions and helped develop Indian society. The Gupta Maharajas. Chandragupta's son... Samudragupta uh, continued in his father's footsteps, ruling from 335 for 45 years. He expanded Gupta rule by force and diplomacy across northern India and into southeastern India. His own son, Chandragupta II, took Gupta India to its high point, one of the greatest times in Indian history. Chandragupta, uh, sorry, Skandagupta, beat off the Indian invasion of India by the Huns from Central Asia. However, the Gupta Empire had been ruled through a loose arrangement of local Rajas under the Gupta Mahajora. And after Skandagupta died, many of the local kingdoms broke away. By 510, the Guptas had beaten by another wave of Hun invaders, and India broke into Rajputs, small little city-states. An alliance of these Rajputs beat off the Huns again in 528. India remained divided for 650 years, except for a period of the Sri Harsha, a religious Raja of Kanauj, succeeded in uniting northern India for 40 years. Gupta culture. The Gupta Maharajas succeeded one another as good and strong rulers, copying Asoka. They set up monuments and inscribed with religious texts all over India. They built new villages and towns, putting Hindu Brahmins in charge. Uh, agriculture and trade flourished. Indians migrated as far as Indonesia, and Buddhism spread to China. Both Hindu and Buddhist cultures developed. The Hindu sacred epics, the, Ma, the, the Mahabharata and the Ramayana, were written at this time. Kalidasa, India's great poet and dramatist, wrote about love, adventure, and the beauty of nature. The Buddhist University at Nalanda had an impressive 30,000 students. This was India's golden age, its classical era of music, dance, sculpture, art, and literature.